Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host Jason Turner. In this episode I am going to discuss stack elision. So in the last episode I discussed heap elision and that's something new that most people aren't aware of. But I want to discuss stack elision today which is a phrase that I honestly just made up. I don't really think it actually exists. And in fact I think this is just a case of eliminating unused variables. But I need to make a point with it. So if you were to create a large array on the stack. Any compiler today is simply going to remove this because it's an unused variable. And in fact, you can even use parts of it if you want to. And basically every compiler is going to be able to just eliminate this code at compile time and return 15. And indeed, I think we can even lower our optimization levels pretty low. Yeah, we're just down to 01, and it's still able to do this with no sweat at all. And what do we do with this information? Well, we can do some interesting things, I think, and I'm going to play around with them for a moment and see. So at this point, we can see we have created an array that is equal to the size of the parameters that have been passed in. And GCC, in this particular case, is taking advantage of the fact that we've invoked undefined behavior by having a function with a return value that we're not returning anything from. And it's just saying that we return 0. But Clang has already eliminated our array for us. And it is instead using a bunch of different registers. So it's using EDI, ESI, EDX, ECX, and R8D, which I find interesting that it is then moved into the extended generic general purpose registers. And I'm actually curious enough at this point to see what happens if I add in a few more. And this is fun to see which registers Clang is going to keep using. So now it's in on R9, And then it is pushing some values to the stack after it's used up all the general purpose registers that it's interested in using. But let's go ahead and make this actually do something now. And because we are not using any containers, we need to include the iterator header and now we can see on GCC, we have not eliminated this array because we are at 01. Let's see what happens if we turn up the optimization levels. So at R02, 03. So in this case, GCC is not able to completely eliminate our stack array variable for us. It is it looks like using still the stack. And let's see if we can get Clang to. And Clang does. So we have an array. We assign it with all the values of our sum. We return the accumulate. And everything works as expected. Now, there are definitely many other ways to do this accumulate with a variadic template. And I'm not trying to say this is a best practice or something that you should do. I'm just playing with what are the compilers able to eliminate at compile time. And I'm guessing if we take a couple of notches off of here, we will get GCC to eliminate it also. There we go. So GCC's ability to inline all of this and eliminate the stack allocations is not as good as Clang's in this particular case. So my point is that I wanted to get to with this video is that it doesn't really matter what you think that you're doing. The compiler is pretty much able to inline and eliminate significant portions of it depending on what kind of side effects there are. And as we saw in the last video, even with uh, heap side effects, it's possible for the compiler to eliminate it. And I'm going to take this and build on it in the next couple of episodes to show some stuff that we can do with const expressions. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.